Hi, in this video we are going to go over how to apply a graphic to our garment. So a graphic is in a single piece of artwork, maybe embroidery, screen print, um, anything like that that you'd want to apply to your garment. So I have a couple of different options for us to take a look at. And so the first step in applying a graphic to our garment is first to create or find the garment you want. So I have a really basic star shape that I created in Illustrator that we're going to use for one of them. And then I also just have a PNG image from Google that we're going to apply as a second type of graphic also. And so the Illustrator graphic I have is really helpful, um, and this works the same with Photoshop too, because if I were to go into the file in Illustrator or Photoshop, and adjust it, so for example, change the color or the size of it, it would automatically adjust that in Clo2 if I restarted my program. And so it's automatically linked so I don't have to go in and reapply the graphic if I make changes to it. Versus the PNG file that I'm going to show you second, or if we were to use a JPEG or PDF file, those we would need to re-upload if we adjust anything in the file if we want it to be updated also. So there are some benefits of using an Illustrator or Photoshop file, but either one works. So the first thing we're going to do to apply a graphic is we're going to go into our 2D toolbar on the right side and we're going to go to the graphic icon here, which looks like this t-shirt with a checkerboard on it. When I click on that, it's going to automatically open up a file on my computer. It automatically opened up the assets folder here in Clo, um, which is that Clo folder that Clo automatically adds to your computer um, with um, all of your files. And you can see some renders down here that it automatically saves in there. But I'm going to go to the folder that I have my graphics saved in. And I'm just going to click and drag this Illustrator file onto my Finder window and then open that. And then on my 2D pattern, I'm going to click where I want this graphic to be placed. So maybe I want it kind of like on the chest here. I'm just going to click to place it. And that will give me some options if I have multiple artboards. Because I do have multiple artboards in this file, it's giving me these options here, but if I only had one single artboard, it would just apply it. But I wanna add this star, so I'm gonna select that artboard and click okay. Then it gives me some options if I want to adjust the size of my graphic or the placement from where I clicked, I could adjust that. But this size, it's automatically going to bring it in true to scale as our Illustrator or Photoshop file. So my Illustrator file, this star was this exact size in inches. So that can be helpful to create it true to scale in your file when you're making it so you don't have to adjust it here. So I'm going to click OK. And then we have the graphic applied. So I can zoom in just to get a little bit closer to it. And some settings that we can do to customize this graphic. I can always click and drag to move it around. Click on it and I'll get um, a wheel to be able to rotate it. But if I were to ever click off of it or go out of this tool, um, you'll notice that if I'm in the edit pattern or transform pattern tool, it won't let me select the graphic to continue editing. It's only actually selecting the pattern piece. And so if I wanted to go back in and select it again, I would need to go to the edit or transform graphic tool, which is that t-shirt with a checkerboard and cursor next to it, right above the graphic icon that we used to add the graphic. So this will allow me to click on it again and continue editing it. If I open up my property editor, you'll see some settings here um, for our graphic also. So I can change the face of the graphic. So if I want it on the front of my fabric, the back or both. So for example, a time when you might want it on the back of your fabric is maybe if you're adding a label for your garment or um, a tag. I'm just gonna hide our avatar by clicking Shift A so we can see inside of our garment. And I'm gonna click and drag this to the back neck. And right now you can see it's applied to the outside. 
But if I were to change the face to be the back of the fabric, now we can see that graphic on the inside too. If I wanted to be able to see it on both sides of my fabric, I could choose both and then it would be applied on both sides. But I'm gonna move it back to the front of the dress where we had it. And bring my avatar back by clicking Shift A again. And then select my graphic again to get back to these settings. We also have the option to tile the graphic. So this would tile it across the pattern piece um, I could either do this on the x-axis, the y-axis, and you'll notice it's kind of slanted. That's because I did slightly rotate it. Or I can tile it as a pattern and that would cover the whole, um, the whole pattern piece. So this is a little bit different than creating a pattern for a couple of reasons. And one reason is this is going to be applied like a graphic. So you'll see if I zoom in, we can see the texture of my fabric, but the texture has gone when it's on the graphic. So you can kind of imagine as if this were applied as a screen print. So if you wanted this actually printed on fabric, you would still want that texture to be there. But when it's applied as a graphic, it loses that texture. So it kind of depends on how you'd actually apply it to your physical garment. If you did have a physical garment that you wanted this um, texture to not be on, for example, you were screen printing or adding embroidery to a whole pattern piece, then you would want to use this technique. Um, but it just depends on what you want your garment's outcome to be. And so then we also have some other options of um, adjusting the angle physically here and also adjusting it to be over a seam line. So if I were to move the graphic right here, you can see it gets kind of cut off at the seam line. But if I were to check the box right here, then it gets applied over the seam line. And so I could have it there. Sometimes it gets a little bit um, messy when you're over a wrinkle or on a curved line. And sometimes, let's see, it will only typically work over the first seam line you put it over. So adjusting the seam line right here, it should be working, but that looks like that might be a glitch in Clo right now. So if you wanted to adjust it, I might would need to re-upload the graphic. Some other settings that we have, if I open up my object browser, and I go into my graphic tab, which looks like this checkerboard right here. I can click on my graphic and that will give me some different settings in my property editor. One of these is I can change the material type to be a different texture. And so this is something we're really going to be able to see more in our render window. So for example, if I wanted it to be more plastic looking, you can see that adjustment here a little bit. But if I were to switch into my render window and turn on interactive render, you can see that plasticky texture even more here, which could be impacted a lot by our lighting settings, which we've gone over in a previous video, how to adjust our lighting settings, if you missed that. I could also change it and make it um, like a different type of fabric, maybe like a silk or satin fabric. Or glitter. or lots of different options. 
We can also go down and desaturate it. So if I wanted to remove the color from my graphic, I could do that. Or I could continue scrolling down and also adjust the color of it. So I'm going to apply like a different color. And right now I have selected this pink color, but it's actually coming out red here in my 3D window. But that's because it's overlaying the pink on top of the orange that I already had. So if you are going to apply a color to an existing colored graphic, then you would want to desaturate. I'm going to change the texture so we can see the color a little bit more. If my star was originally white, then I wouldn't need to desaturate it. But if I continue scrolling down, I can also adjust the opacity and some other settings too. If I were to go back into my um, 2D window, I'm just going to delete this graphic so I can show you the other one. So I'm going to click on it with our transform graphic tool and click delete on my keyboard. And in the next video, part two of how to add graphics and create custom graphics in this series, we're going to be adding the other graphic example that I was mentioning, the PNG, and also applying different textures and adding depth to it to make it look more realistic in some different ways.